morning everybody, Kelly Davis here. I'm just going to do a little short video on how to brush and comb the dog correctly. Now we've got the gorgeous Mr Pickles, say hi everybody. Um, Mr Pickles does a lot of demonstrating for me and various other um, ventures, i.e. calendars, maybe calendar photo shoots, you like those, don't you Mr P? So um, what we're going to do today is just show you very briefly how to brush and comb your dog correctly. Now, as you can see, he's not been brushed or combed, so I wanted to show you on a coat that was slightly, slightly dirty and slightly grubby, because this is what you're going to be getting over the home in the next few weeks. Um, so it's very important to make it realistic for you guys, basically. Now, the tools that we're going to need to use are going to be a, a slicker brush, which looks a little bit like this. So a slicker brush is basically um, a brush that's got lots of metal pins on it. Now the pins are slightly angulated, so you have got to be quite careful. Um, this brush is ideal because it gets from root, root to tip and it really does, it, it will break up through the coat and it will really help to make sure that, ensure that all those knots and tangles are out. If you've got a brush like this at home, so something that's got sort of pins on that side and bristles on that side or either or, please don't use it, it's not going to work. Um, you can imagine trying to get through this, you know, it's just, it's, it's never going to work. Sometimes it's, oh, it's almost quite nice to think of your own hair. Um, and in Mr. Pickles' case, this is not going to do a lot. Yes, maybe a little bit on his head, but actually when you get down to, further on down through this thick, thicker coat, it's not literally not going to hardly touch it. So they're not always the best option, to be honest. Um, and then what we're going to do is use a combination comb. So a nice metal comb, if you can find one. Um, lots of pet shops do grooming equipment now, so you know you, you can speak to your local groomer if you can't find one. We sell them here, so if you, if you haven't got them, we do we do have them for you. So what we're going to do is slip a brush and a comb, and you're going to start in sections or layers. Now, ideally start at the bottom and work your way up the dog. You don't want to be brushing all the way over the top constantly and then never hitting the bottom sections of the, of the, of the skin. The most important thing with brushing is not to flick your wrist when you're brushing. Because as you can imagine, doing that every single time is going to make the skin sore. It's going to really, really scratch the skin. And that will then cause slicker rash, which means the blood will then flow to the top of the skin and make your dog very sore um, and very itchy and potentially bleed. So it's very important that your brushing technique is not important as what the, the tools that you're going to use. So what we're going to do is start at the very bottom. Now, Mr. Pickles has been clipped out underneath here for, for um, reasons for myself, make, make him a lot cleaner. So we're going to start at the bottom of his coat from where it's a very short hair. And then we're going to literally just brush. Turn around a little bit, buddy. Literally just going to brush. So again, like I said, this coat is slightly grubby. It's not filthy. You don't want to be brushing out a filthy dog. If you start brushing out a dog that's absolutely pitted in mud and dirt, it's going to be quite cross with you. So you are going to make sure, have to make sure it's slightly cleaner. But this is this is an ideal coat to show you on because it's not quite filthy and it's not completely clean. And this is what you're going to be getting at home. So brush. And once you've brushed that little section, so we call this layer brushing. So you're doing layer by layer, section by section. Once you've done that, you can use your comb then to work through the coat from the root to the tip. And again, no, no curving of your comb, just literally straight, straight motions. And that will ensure that you're not going to um, sort of, you know, really dig into the skin because that's what's so important. There are some really sensitive areas like your groin and around your stifles and the feet. Most dogs hate having their feet done. Just be really gentle around this area. You know, you don't have to go crazy at it, just, just, just be gentle um, and think of, think of it as if you're brushing your own hair or your child's hair, that's always a good, um, a good way of thinking of it. So nice straight motion. What's reckon Mr P? What's reckon Mr P? He's so cool. Mr P's had his ears clipped off. Oh, how cute does he look? Mm -hmm. So a nice straight motion, brush and then comb through. And you can see actually how much, so he hasn't been groomed for about a week, how much already is coming out of his comb. And that, if you leave that over a period of time, that's when your brushing starts and it starts to get, it starts to become a problem. So nice straight motion. 
Now also, if you have a dog that's very compliant, what you can do is get them to roll onto their side or onto their back for you. Mr. Pickles is great. He rolls over right onto his back and he's brilliant. You, you can literally do every sort of single inch of him upside down. So if you're led on the floor and your dog's on the floor, brilliant. Just grab them, give them a little belly, belly tickle and they should roll over for you and allow you to do it. Um, so that's always good. It's always a good tip if your dog is, um, is helpful. And then it allows you to get to all these little areas like around your feet, around the hocks and around the bottom and the tail. So that's another little top tip for you. So that's a little section on brushing and how to keep your dog mat free during this, these uncertain times where we're allowed to open and we're not. And also to make our job slightly easier as groomers. Alright, thank you very much.